Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. <laughs> I gave you a little, I give you a little something extra there today. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're in for a treat. I know I say that every week, but for real, you are. Because everybody is a treat. What can I say? I attract treats. What can I say? You're a treat. <laughs> but today I'm interviewing my friend, Keith Arthur Bolden. He is an actor. He is a director. He is a producer. He is just, a, a, he's a professor. You know, he's currently at the time of this recording, he's an associate professor of theater and performance at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. He, I mean, has more theater credits than I can even care to list. His bio is in the show notes. You just don't have to read the things. This is the person you see, be like, I've seen him in something. Didn't I see him in something? Yeah, that's him. That's him. I mean, some of his recent film credits are, um, the upcoming Till, Terra Lake Drive. He was in Genius, the Aretha Franklin story. The Devil Made Me Do It, Games People Play, The Miss Pat Show. Uh, he, he just works, okay? He just he just works. Just, just Google him. <laughs> I don't wanna be here all day talking about your credits, Keith. <laughs> but seriously, Keith, you know, he's such a joy. I've known him for quite some time. We met in Los Angeles in the theater community and he ended up moving uh, to Atlanta and a, a, his the, like a next chapter of his career just took off for him and his wife. And I'm excited for you here to, for, he, for you to hear his story because it's not, it doesn't always look like, oh, I go to Hollywood and then things happen. Sometimes you reverse and things happen. You reset and things happen. So I think you'll be very inspired by his story. So enjoy, get your snack, get your beverage and enjoy this interview with Keith Arthur Bolden. Keith Arthur hey. Bolden, you are here. Hashtag. Yeah. The acting professor. Hey, <laughs> booking magnet, how you doing? Oh, I love it. You call you call yourself the acting professor. Is that what, is that what I heard? Yep. I love that because you are teaching. You are teaching the children. I well, am. they're not all children. They grown ups. They grown. They grown. But you know, there's maturity. There's levels. You know. So yeah. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get into all of that, Keith. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for being here. Um, you all are in for a huge treat. Uh, I only invite people into this space that have immense value to share. And Keith is one of those people. We've known each other for quite some time. I guess we met in LA. I saw That's you in that met. wonderful production I, that I could, I just saw Michael Shepard last week in Little Shop of Horrors. And you guys did the Women of Brewster's Place. Yes. At Celebration Theater. And you sang a song about the, the paper bones. Yes, right? yes. Mm. I never forgot that. That was my first introduction to you. Never yes, we that. met, we met. Shout out to Celebration Theater. Um, so I love that. So it's always good to when you connect with people and they stay in your life. But before we get into all the things that you are, have done, I want to know how it started. Tell, where are you from? How, how did you even get into performing and being an actor? Uh, I'm from Los Angeles. Um, and uh, I'll make a, a long story longer. Uh, I um, I think I've always been akin to the arts, uh, but it wasn't something that was supported in the household. Like everybody was civil workers. They moved from Louisiana to the West Coast to, to find jobs and opportunity. So this this me reaching out, playing, making uh, drums out of uh, out of out of pans and pots, or taking a uh, draw, buying a cartoon book, and learning how to draw cartoons, or taking a, a cooking class, or wanting to take tap dance class, or writing my first play at eight years old without yeah. ever having seen a play. I've never, I had never seen a play. I wrote a play about the birth of Christ and I cast my cousins and we produced it. It was a 30 minute play and we did it. After doing all those things, nobody in my family said, I think he's into this art thing and we should, we should look at it. Mm. And so it went dormant and I, I, it wasn't revisited until I got to college at Fresno State and Fresno State hired their first black professor in the theater department. And he came around to the university one-on-one classes. His name was Thomas Witt Ellis. And to recruit people to do the Color Museum, which is the first play I did at the, at the beginning of my college career. And I changed, I subsequently changed my major from being a film critic. <laughs> because I always, I just always love film. My first images in my head are John Travolta of Saturday Night Fever and Warren Beatty and uh, uh, Heaven Can Wait. These two white men in these white suits, but they were just iconic posters. Before I could read, I knew what movies were. And I worked in a movie theater, the projectionist. And so 
I subsequently changed, but I never thought I could do it. So I was going to be a, a, a film critic. Uh, but I subsequently changed my major. Uh, my parents said, well, just get a degree and you can get a job in probation. You know, that was the, <laughs> you, know, I, you, could be, you could be a postal inspector because my mom worked for the county of probation. She was an office manager. My dad worked for as a mechanic for the, the post office. So their, 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 their scope of the possibility yeah. was only in, in their limited scope, right? So, so I did that. And then um, six and a half years later, I graduated from college. And then I go to graduate school at Illinois. And the last play I did at the end of my college career was Color Museum. Hmm. So, so I had these two bookends. And, that, and I, I note that because it's important because I believe that the theater has made me um, a more em- empathetic and passionate and compassionate person to where I, I embrace all walks. Hmm. There was, um, we had, you know, you know, Ms., uh, Color Museum, Miss Raj, right? Hmm. So we had a young man playing Miss Raj in undergrad beautiful dancer. I mean, this man, he's passed away now, but he's six, six, two seventy, but a beautiful dancer. I mean, he was ballet and he was just, uh, and he was gay and I had never met anybody like this before. And I was uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. He dropped out of the show for health reasons. And they asked me to do it. And I said, no, I'm a freshman. I don't know what that is. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not, I can't play that guy. Yeah. And so I didn't do it. But when the opportunity came up in graduate school, ten years later, I could not wait to play Miss Raj. And for me, that was a barometer of my growth as a person. Right. Not of my skill set, because I could have done it. I could have played at it. But when and at the end of graduate school, it was more of an embodiment. And so I've always carried that story with me is because I, I, I grew up in a homophobic household. You know, um, if they didn't go to church and didn't pray, they weren't right. They go to hell, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just know I, the theater taught me that there's just much more to people than me. So that's how I got started. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good story. That's such a good story. I, um, and I, I was. I love the fact that I started in the theater also. I think mm-hmm. it just, you just approach the work differently. You mm-hmm. are exposed to, like you said, you're exposed to so much, so many people, so mm-hmm. many worlds. And also what I love about theater too is, especially when you're younger, you know, and in school, you get to play all the roles. Like, yeah. you know, like, oh, Gary's age, yeah. no problem. Like, <laughs> yeah. please, please give it to me, right? <laughs> so I love yeah. that. So yeah. when you were, when you were, you know, you talked about John, John Travolta, Saturday Night Fever, seeing the posters, when you watched television, so even though it wasn't fostered in you with your, from your loved ones, but you, it was still within you, who were some of the people that you would mm. watch on, what was it, what drew you in? Was it, more, sounds like it was more movies because you wanted to be a film critic. Like what, who were some of the people, what was it about them that made you know? Oh, I watched a ton of TV, I watched a ton of TV. I mean, my... Uh, to the point, <laughs> still, when I come home, the first thing I do is turn TV on. You know, it's just background noise for me. It's just, mm-hmm. uh, that's how my family just operated. And, um, you know, growing up, you know, you know, the content that we have today, didn't, it wasn't as uh, as diverse. It wasn't as um, varied. It wasn't as challenging, right? So not that Sanford and Son wasn't good. But, you know, you look at Fred, so I don't see myself, even though Red Fox was only in his 50s. But he looked like he was in his seventies, right? So I never saw myself. I saw JJ. I saw, I saw comedy, mm-hmm. um, and there were no black dramas. You know, Joe Morton and, and James Earl Jones did the first black drama on CBS in the nineties when I was in school. So there were no there were no black dramas. But that does, I didn't really see color though. I don't want to say that because I don't want to say that. What I will say is that I always saw talent, mm. and I always appreciated talent, and I was pretty good at doing impersonations. Oh, I'm still pretty good at it. You're right in, in terms of embodying people, okay, taking their, taking their essence and giving it back to them. Right, Rich Little was an impersonator back in the day. He used to impersonate, you know, uh, 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 Reagan and and John Wayne and all these people. A great a master impersonator, but I couldn't impersonate any of those people. I I tried to do the John Wayne, and people did it, and 
Well, I'll tell you, Pilgrim. And I would do it, but I, it, nobody would take that and say, oh, yeah, let's hire him. Right. So there really were no people for me to impersonate. And I didn't see any Black people impersonating other people. But I always innately had in me the skill to embody energy. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I get, so when I say Rich Little, uh, that's the first person that comes to my mind because he was an impersonator, you know? So, yeah, so, okay. That yeah. answer your question. It does, no, it does. Because the thing about it is, you know, is, and especially those of you who've been watching this series, you know, it's a reminder that each and every one of us has something that is magnetic, that's magical about us. You know, when, when we see you on the screen or on the stage, there's something about you that makes me lean in. You know, that's another thing that I love about theater that I learned. It doesn't matter if you're in the third wing, in the back, in the last row in the course, you, my eye might be on you. Like you're, there's no safe zone of you not being seen. So you better show up and show out. Right. right. And sometimes a person in that's the right. back. That's right. Show is, up and show out. Right. Sometimes the person in the back is, is serving more than the person in the front row. So it's about just knowing, like, I just am always so curious about, you know, what inspired you, you know? So when you started, when you did start working, what were some of the first jobs that you were booking? Was it mostly theater? And then it moved to, like, I just know, it's so funny to know you now, because I know you're all over my TV all the time. <laughs> um, but I know it didn't start that way. So what were the, some of the earlier earlier gigs and how did you start to use theater. some of the things you learned? Theater, okay. Yeah. Theater, theater, theater. Uh, actually, my, my wife and I, we kept, well, my girlfriend at the time, we kept booking jobs together and they didn't know we were together. So our first three jobs out of school in Illinois, we booked together. So we were, the foundation of, of, of who I am as an artist, uh, it is that year and a half, actually this one summer that Tanache and I were on the road together, just me and her in a car, we put 30,000 miles on a car in two and a half months touring libraries throughout the South doing a play called A Reading Out of Sea with Timeline Theater out of Chicago. Wow. 30,000 miles. People normally put 12 to 15 of that on a car in a year. Right. So 30, that's a lot of time with someone. And I mm-hmm. tell her, I said, uh, you know, I think we spent the equivalent of 10 years together. And that's been the base of that. We learned each other. We learned, we, we learned uh, how to keep our integrity on the road. We learned how to, and it was children's theater. We were going to libraries performing for free. You know, we got paid, but it was people could show up or not show up. So sometimes we have two, two kids, sometimes we have 50. Right. But the show had to be the same. Uh, and then we went to St. Louis uh, and worked for the Black Rep. And we did their children's touring company. Uh, and then we did Shakespeare Festival in the park in St. Louis. And then we, so my first two years out of school were children's theater, mm. which is probably the most honest audience you will see. Funny. So your presence. This is boring. <laughs> I got to take a piss. <laughs> when is this over? <laughs> right. My mom's here. I got to go. My mom's here. I got to go. Right. So. That's how I got my union card from a theater from Young. Young. That's how I got my union card. Where'd you go? Where, where'd you get it? Where? It was at the Alliance got... Theater, James and the Giant Peach. Ah, that was right before we came. I think. <laughs> 2012 or something like that. Oh no, 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 no. It was, it was... Oh, oh, okay, okay. Further, further back, or it might have been Let's Talk About AIDS. It was a show that called Let's Talk About AIDS that toured, honey. It was one, one of the two, but that would no. It was, it was way. I got mine. It was I early got mine 2000s. Theater USA. Theater Works USA, 2004. I said, this is the last, the only children's theater I'll do at this point is to get my equity card. And that's yep. what I did. I booked that my first week in New York. Yeah, you gotta have a plan. That was, it was just part of my plan. I was like, cause those cattle calls, hoping to get mm. seen, waiting all day. Mm. Mm. We're talking about, still, we're talking about New York. That, New York that's City. Yeah. Still did that though. Even with that equity card, I was at those. And nobody ever told me that I, I never told myself I couldn't sing and dance. I have a pretty healthy ego. And I'm like, oh, you know, this is a New York. I, yeah, of course, I can, I can, I have a, I can hold a tune. I, you know, right. I can pick up a combo. Girl, I'm in there getting cut, <laughs> trying to pick up this combo. <laughs> you know, I could sing. The singing would get me in, and then the reading would definitely get me in, but I get that combo. I'm like, oh no, we, we, we good. We good. <laughs> He's an actor who moves. You, know, you got folks coming from Carnegie Mellon and what'd you say you learn quick in new york what you are by the by the breakdown of the, 
in the trades is like looking for singers who move well, actors who sing, actors who move well. Like you get, cause I was like, yeah, I'm a dan- I say, I'm a dancer. Let me tell you when I learned I wasn't a dancer. I, yeah, yeah, I took dance class since I was little. When I went to a dance call in New York, it was with Maurice Hines, honey. I was like, oh, Jelly's last jam. I said, this Ooh. is, uh, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. It's that real stuff. But D-I, but D-I, but D-I. No, I, don't, I know, but D-do. I don't know, but D-I. Okay. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a real thing. But I, I, I still showed up to all those. Yeah, me and my homegirl Mahogany would meet up and be there five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, and then we just stay in the city all day. I I don't know where I would go. Virgil's Barbecue. I spent a lot of time mm-hmm. at Virgil's Barbecue in between call. You know, you go get your time in the morning when they open up, and yeah. then your time might be four o'clock. Well, I'm not going back to Brooklyn. No. Nope. So That's I will say fair. New York. New York was. I don't. I don't miss the grind, but I do miss the hustle. Mm-hmm. The grind was hard. Oh yeah. And then you hard. you moved to New York to not live in New York. You know, you're there for six months. You gone for six months. You know, I mm-hmm. did a I did a lot of regional theater, and I wasn't I wasn't always home. But I had a you know it was yeah. Yeah, it's a whole. If if you've never experienced it, it is it is a whole situation, and it is a thing. It just you feel unlike I would say like living in L.A. Especially back then, let me speak to back at that time. You mm-hmm. feel you felt yourself working for your craft. You felt. Mm-hmm. The effort you were putting in it wasn't just mm-hmm. on the of emails. Maybe somebody would call. No, you literally, physically put that time in. But um, you know, Christine. You know, Christine. To that to that point, though, it's it's we weren't afraid of the process because mm-hmm. we knew that everybody that came before us had went through that process. And what I'm seeing now, as an educator, as an actor, as a director, as a producer, nobody wants to go through a process. They want quick. They, you know they they want it now, and 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 if you don't earn it, you won't appreciate it. You 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 won't create more. Mm-hmm. Everything you get, you and you you'll be feel entitled to it because you you feel like you your birthright is your earning of it, mm-hmm. and that's not the case. There are so many jobs that you can do in this industry. You don't have to be in front of the camera. Anything yeah. that that exists in the private industry exists in the entertainment industry, and you need to find your lane and how you want to tell the story or support the story. But don't take away process and how we actually develop these stories and these characters, so that we have twenty years later we can look back and say, "Wow, that was a time captured in a bottle." We see these. We see a Forrest Gump. That took you. Watch, you ever watched um, uh, the movies that made us on Netflix? How the series? Oh no, I don't think I've seen it. No. They go through a process of like Dirty Dancing, Footloose, Nightmare on Elm Street, of how these movies made it and how they changed the dichotomy of, 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 of that genre. So Halloween, Forrest Gump, Ghostbusters. But those movies, they were fought for, mm-hmm. developed over time. And that's what I think we're, we're getting away from. Yeah, I would totally agree. I mean, especially because you are, we, we do, because we're educators, right, in, in our mm-hmm. own rights. I know I hear it all the time. People want a quick fix. And mm-hmm. I never like to say what's not possible, right? I'm never saying you have to, like, I, I hope that the things that I suffered through and got scams that I've dealt with and disappointment, <laughs> I, I, I hope that when I share that story, you don't have to repeat that, right? So you want to learn because success leaves clues. And you want to be open, but then also be open to what your your personal journey is going to look like. And, and, it, and it might just be, take that work what do you know for sure what does Keith know for sure is your magical superpower when you step in a room when you step on a set what is that thing no one has to validate so you funny. so funny before I answer that I will say that the universe I say universe now I'm still Christian but I say universe I think God is on the right so I it gives you what you need man I was having this conversation just two days ago about superpower with some students. Really? Everybody has their super, I, the, the literal words, the literal words. Wow. And I identified my superpower in that moment. My superpower is people. Mm. My superpower is connecting people. Um, and so that's why I'm going to be moving into producing, right? Because I, 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 I'm interested in everyone's uh, journey. I, I'm, I'm, and I think that some people, because of our business, because you don't know who to trust or you've been duped, 
my energy is sometimes looked at as being trying to be advantageous. But look, I'm an actor at, at the base of it. I'm a storyteller. Mm-hmm. I know that there are most actors can't do nothing for me. If they're not producing, directing, or writing, they can't do nothing for me. So my connection with people, with other actors, is just I want to be connected with other storytellers. And maybe we collaborate, but maybe we just have a great friendship. Right. And I'm interested in excavating what that relationship, what that interaction is, because I don't think there are any accidents. Yeah. And so I try to take it, try to take advantage of it, not monetarily, but advantage of the human connection. And that's that's what this thing is about. So that is my superpower is connecting people and my earnest, my earnestness in it. And I'm and I'm leaning more into it, Christine. I, I used to shy away from it and oh, I can't talk to these people because they're above me, they're above I can't do it. like no. I'm an artist and a storyteller just like them. And everybody's looking for home. Whatever home means to them, everybody's looking for their joy and their home. And they find it in you or in your family, great. If you find it in them and their family, great. So that's my superpower. Yeah, I love that. I love that. What a superpower to have. And I love that you already in that time, in that mind frame. That's 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 not that's mm-hmm. just that's just an extra confirmation. What gig was it for you? What paid gig? What paid gig proved to yourself, I'm really good at this. Wow. I became a better, what did I say? Wait. I became a better artist when I became a full-time professor at Spelman College. It was because I didn't want to be a fraud. I didn't want to teach tricks. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to be held accountable for my own choices. And so when I moved to Atlanta, I just do what I always do when I move to a city. I locate the regional theater and then all the other theaters. I do a mailing and I do it for my wife and I, and we start to meet people. And that's how it started. Got representation within a month. And then I start having auditions. And I really didn't know how to do camera work. I thought I did, but it wasn't until we started teaching an on-camera class. We were a fraud when we did that before. <laughs> We're gonna learn. We're gonna learn on the job. We learned on the job, and we and we saw the deficiencies that were happening with people, not in Atlanta, but just people, and how they were. Well, I won't give up. You gotta take my class for that. So, right. The 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 pay job. How I became better was Spelman, right? In terms of, in terms of how I approached the work. Right. The I will have to say, um, it's recent. I think actually. And it's because um, when you have creators come up to you and they give you more work Mm -hmm. and they give you lines and monologues on the day because they know you can handle it because I can memorize a page a minute and dump it. Come on, come on, come on. Skills. Well, well, let's, 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 let's say screenplays, right? right? Teleplays. Still, still. Not, you know, not, not theater, not theater (laughs) monologues. Okay. Not, not no, no, no spacing. (laughs) So it was, I think it's Cobra Kai. Really? Okay. And I haven't even have I haven't even seen you in that. I literally, y'all, wait till y'all when I y'all go through the show notes and you look Keith up. <laughs> You'd be like, I've seen this man in everything. <laughs> I've, 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 I've been blessed. And and, and, I've, and I've and I've transformed myself in the last year too. I've lost a lot of weight and I've and I've 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 held myself accountable for the limitations I put on myself. Mm. I want to be a lead. I want to be a leading man. Uh, I want to have more uh, larger supporting roles. So I need to do the work in myself. Not that I need to lose weight. I just need to be healthy where I am. And that's where I am now. That's and so cool. Cole Kai, I was, I was, I mean, they set up a crane shop for me, you know, this crane shop where I say it's karate time. And I just like, they did that for me because they believe in my work. They believe in my, my magnetism, my char- my charisma, my choices, my my physical choices, you know, I speak very and much. My my gestures are very succinct as well, you know. So I, this lends itself to my acting. I don't have a lot of all this stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I'm speaking, and so I, I that that premiered in December, right before that. I had Lovecraft Country. I had The Conjuring. I had all these things working opposite Oscar winners and Academy Award nominees, but it was Cobra Kai because those creators. I've never seen people so excited about their own work. And it's in the fourth season. They are so proud of their work. You know, three got three white guys putting up 
they were fans of a show and they said, you know what, let's do this. Yeah. And they found something for me in the first season. I auditioned for something and they said, we got to have this guy on. And then they gave me Daryl, who serves as a committee member and the announcer for the tournament. Mm -hmm. And so when, when they come back to the tournament three years later, here I am, you know, lost a little weight, got some <laughs> hair, you know. Switch it up the, a little got, bit. You know, my gla- I don't have glasses anymore. I got LASIK, you know. And yeah. so, so I was ready for what they had planned for me. And so I, that was really, uh, thanks for asking that. I don't think I had thought about that, but that was, it's funny, that was very recent. Yeah, I love it. And that's, it's, I think that's inspiring for our, for our viewers and our listeners to hear. It's, it's, not also, it's not always the thing other people may assume it is, mm-hmm. right? People will be like, that, that thing, you were in a movie with The Rock. It right. wasn't that. We're like, no, because it's an inside, that's an inside job. Yeah. Like this is in your own barometer of, you know what you did to prep. You know which, how you felt in the moment. Mm-hmm. I remember some of my earlier performances where I just, like I shot something the other day. I shot another episode of NCIS. I got invited, you know, it was a role. Hey. that was supposed to be one off. They wanted to reprise my role. So I just shot that the other day. And hey. as I'm on the set, they put out a sneak peek of my episode that actually airs this Sunday. And the sneak peek was just my whole scene. I was like, I'm the sneak peek. Hey. And I was, I was just in that moment with these people who've been on the show for 13 seasons and just standing in, standing in it because in I, it. I belong mm-hmm. here too. And just that feeling and that knowing again, y'all is internal. No one can mm-hmm. give you that. No one's going to tell you, okay, Keith, you're, you're worthy now. you you can do this. Like, no, like something about you is mm-hmm. saying that. And if you got to believe, I, you got to convince me, you know, yeah. or believe yeah. me. So, so I love that. And what I'm, I love about your story too, that because I know, I know you personally, you know, you left, you, you and your wife decided to leave LA because you weren't working to the level that you knew you could, for whatever reason, it was just a little quiet. It was a little, it was a little, and he was like, we made a decision. We're going to go, we're going to get a house. We're going to move. And I just love watching you and your wife, how y'all have blossomed, not just in, in your, your career. Like it was the I'm from the, I'm saying for myself, I feel like it was the best decision you could have made. I think so too. I think so too. Career wise, emotional wise, um, you know, community wise, we we, you know, we have a few people in the community that, that we really rely on and lean on. They're, they're great resources and friends. And um, and we started the this, you know, this we do these bold and brunches. We used to do them in LA too. Um, but they're much more pointed now to 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 bring minds together, energies together. They're possible collaborations. We did that, and I mean, that's how Tanache got to, to shadowing uh, on a, on a TV show, and, and uh, she's going to be directing on Broadway, and she's going to be doing all these things, right? So, for me, I changed my mindset of energy in the pandemic, January twenty twenty. I told Tanache, I said, we need to shift energy in circles. We need to be intentional about our circles. Not that, and this is this people get a bad rap for this. Oh, you bougie, you moving on. It's not, I'm not turning my back. Yeah. I just have to, I I can't stay in this circle because I'll just stay here. And I have so many dreams and and, and ambitions that I I have to put energy into other circles. Are you a sellout? You no, I'm not. Truly, I'm not. You know, I'm down. But if I want, but if I want to tell these stories and get them to the masses. I have to shift the energy into the circles where that's going to get those stories out. Will I get more money? Maybe, but it's not about the money. The other thing I think that people need to realize is that when you get to the point that you're wreck, really, really happy for people booking work and you're not comparing mm-hmm. yourself about what you don't have, it will change your life. It will change yes, your life. Will. I'm almost 50 years old. I'm just now hitting my stride. But when I walk on the set, I own it because I know what I've done already. That's called process. Yeah. Right? That's called process. That's called longevity. I know people, most people don't recognize me, Christine, because I've, I always transform myself. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, I'm a physical actor. I'm a character actor. Right? I remember Tanashi used to say, um, I was doing Jim of the Ocean for the second time. I was doing it at Rubicon. She says, I saw you on stage. Why? You, I don't recognize you. I'm like, <laughs> Ain't that Good. the damn point? <laughs> you know, I don't want you to recognize me. She said, you're doing something with your face. Yeah, I'm doing the character. That's a physical choice. She said, okay. 
you know. So I, I right. people don't recognize when they see me. I don't get recognized. You, you get recognized, I'm sure. But man, yeah, I don't. I don't get recognized. I I don't. I don't. I'm that face. People be like, I know you from something. I know you from what something. you what you almanac. What you been on? Right. I'm not doing that with you because I don't know. You don't watch. And you won't ask me that. And you don't watch TV. No. Here's my name. Mm-mm. Google me. See that? No. Then they go, oh, I got to Google exactly. you now. Who's walking down the street giving their I, resume? Listen. Ain't nobody from IBM talking about <laughs> I work in the accounting department. At, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, that is usually my response. Especially with the ball head, I'm always transforming. Like, yeah. you don't know. I just have that face. I know you from somewhere. I don't know where it is. So yeah. the people yeah. who are staring, I know they don't know it's Christine. They just be like, she. And I just also, I walk in a room like, you should know me. So, yeah. well, you're, and you're striking too. You're tall. You have your head, yeah. there's teeth. You know, <laughs> of course, I got you. Got to be somebody. You right. Can't walk in, you can't walk in here like that and not be nobody. <laughs> right. I love this. Uh, oh, that was. I needed that laugh. Uh, we kind of started talking about this when you were talking about you or you leaving LA because it was not. It was not what it needed to be for where you for what you knew you could do. I want to talk can about. I follow, can I qualify that for a second, though? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So, so I did more theater in LA than I did in New York. Wow. LA has more theater than New York and Chicago combined. It's, but it's not commercial theater. Right. Right. So, you're not going to make any money. But I will say I grow exponentially as an artist. I did Neighbors in LA. I did Jim of the Ocean twice. I did Raising in the Sun. I did shows that I never could have done in New York because they yeah. weren't producing those shows in New York. And so it, that also gave me confidence. The LA scene at the time yeah. was, uh, was pretty good. That's what I, and, and that was, you know, my first, when I first moved to LA, that's all I did because I didn't have an agent and, you know, mm-hmm. I, didn't, I was like, well, let me do something. And yeah. I must say, you know, yeah, I got paid $11 a show, but I got to create and people will be like, what are you doing? Like, you, you just have to, you have to understand, understand. Yeah. Like, yeah. the why behind it. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're going to spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. I want to talk a bit, uh, transition a bit to talking about the ebbs and the flows of, of this industry. You mm-hmm. know, there will be times, and again, this is another thing, just like process and people want to skip the process. The only thing that's consistent about this industry is the inconsistency, right? Uh, it's, it's going to, it's going to do this. It's the thing that attracts us to it. And it's the thing that can be frustrating about it. You know, like the excitement, the adrenaline, all of that. But how have you, how do you deal with the ebb and flow, whether it's from, and I'm not just talking about just, you know, some, whatever that means for some people, this could be like in between gigs and so money's tight, or it's how do you deal with being, it's down to you and one other actor for this, you know, series regular and you, you don't get it like and the emotional care that it takes for yourself, mm. mental care. Mm. What does that look like for you? Maybe. And how has that changed or evolved? Oh, wow. It's changed a lot. Um, when I was in L.A., I, I, I had a survival job at Beverly Hills High. I was a textbook coordinator for four years and I was doing theater at night. And when we got my my oldest son is 26 and then my my second child is nine and my my youngest is five. All boys. When Tanasha was pregnant with Kingston, my middle kid. In 2012, I decided that I was done with with. Uh, Beverly Hills High. I decided that it wasn't, I, I, I was not an absentee father, but my, my oldest son wasn't raised in the house with me. And so I decided that I did not want to be unhappy going to work and then coming home and raising this kid because I was having drinks every night. I was, you know, I was, I was, I just wasn't happy. And so I, I went in one day and I just quit because they wouldn't let me take a leave of absence to do Jim of the Ocean. In Ventura. 
And when I tell you God provided that year, and, and then the next year, almost to the almost to the day, I got the job offer at Spelman to move to Atlanta. But I got to spend a year with my baby, right? My Kingston. And what has changed for me? And I say when I got to Atlanta, I don't know if much changed. This job was pretty stressful because it felt like a one man kind of band sometimes. Mm-hmm. In terms of um, in terms of my availability, not in terms of, of my colleague's skill, but just in terms of what I was willing to do because I'm an actor, I'm a practitioner. I you know you don't sleep. Yeah. You know I operate I operate normally on four or five hours of sleep a night. Uh, that's also my superpower is uh, I, I I I wake up present. I'm a morning person and a night person. Mm, um, that so, is so interesting. I'm, I'm not a night person. <laughs> morning. Uh, I've, I've been blessed that way. Oh yeah. Overnight shoots. If I shoot overnight, I might get home at five o'clock in the morning. I might sleep for three hours and get back up and you know do it all over again. Uh, and so, how it's changed for me um, in the pandemic? I, was, I guess it really shifted in the pandemic. We had seven people living in our home: my core family, and then the kids' godmother and my mother-in-law. And we did that for seven months or so. Um, we had a really tight schedule, and I decided that I was going to change my relationship with food, uh, get off the schedule of eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but only eat when I'm hungry. I guess they call it intermittent fasting now. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put a label on it. I just decided when I, when my body craves something, I'm going to eat it. Now, this thing may not work for everybody, but it works for me. And I shed 40 pounds doing that, mm-hmm. right? I started working out. I started meditating. I started thinking about me and my purpose in life started thinking about my legacy. I'm also almost 50. So I'm having this midlife thing. What am I leaving? What am I leaving behind? And so these thoughts and these conversations I'm having with people are enlightening me and I'm always evolving. And the thing, the other thing that I've changed my mentality is that I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. None of the characters I play are perfect and I don't want them to be perfect. Who wants to go to a theater and see perfection? Right. You want to see the, the fragility. You want to see the frailty. You, you want to see people struggling. And so as I was in struggling internally, I decided to put tools in my life to help me not struggle so much with my self-doubt. Mm-hmm. But what actually is my superpower? You know, what makes me magnetic? What, what brings me back to the human connection? And that's what I decided. It was a human connection, Christine. Mm-hmm. It's about people. And, when, and, and I'm my mother's child. I'm my mother's child. So my mom never met a stranger. Mm-hmm. My phone in my home growing up would start ringing at six o'clock in the morning and my mom would be up on the phone getting ready for work with her sister. And I could call my mom any day throughout the, through any time throughout the day and she would answer the phone and talk to me and tell me she'd call me back. But she did that for everybody. And at her funeral, <laughs> it's funny. Everybody who got to talk about her. My mom was a civil worker. She had over 400 people at her funeral. You know, wow. she, she was loved. Wow. <laughs> and she was loved. And she, people were outside in the overflow. And, um, oh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> she, oh, everybody who got up, they said, um, hi, I'm Margaret's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so she just made everybody get, get up. <laughs> Hi, my name is such and such, and I'm Margaret's best friend. <laughs> so, so she had this special relationship with everybody. And I like to think of myself that way, too. When I think about somebody, and now you have text. You can text them. You don't have to have a phone call. But I, I send birthday cards. I send out. If I, they're on my mind, there's a reason that God put that person on my mind. Mm-hmm. So why am I not going to bless them with a hello or I love you or thinking about you because I don't want to bother them? Mm-hmm. So I just follow the impulse. And I think that has helped a lot of my relationships. Um, and it makes me feel good too, because I'm just not keeping tabs on people, but I'm, I just care, girl. I, yeah. I just care, you know, and I, you know it, but it, it costs though. It costs. Yeah. Well, the, the, you know, I'm, I'm, all, I'm a big advocate in, in my community. And when I'm at, whenever I, I have a chance to speak to artists about our, our, our mental health, positive, mm-hmm mental health, our self-care, and really caring for ourselves in this journey, Mm. you know, because it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. As much as we love it and love to play, whether it's how we're trying on a character and sitting in a character that 
is shifting our shifting us internally or it is just dealing with rejection after rejection or no uh, after yeah. no because you how you des- decide what rejection is, is is personal but no after no after no after no you know so what's one you know I, I hear about what you have done what you're what you've done in the past several years what would you say if you were talking to your younger self and you were think and you looked back at how maybe you used to deal mm-hmm. what's something what's something you would a piece of advice you give your younger self when your younger self heard no time and time again mm-hmm. what would have been a healthier way to maybe process some of that because we may have someone watching who mm-hmm. is in that place now wow uh i don't know if i figured that out um i will take a stab at it It's okay. Everybody's not going to like you. Ain't that the truth. (laughs) Um, An epiphany I've had recently, though. So I'm getting quieter because it's getting deep. So ah, let me give it out again. So listen, the thing. (laughs) thing Stay in it. Stay in it. People are people. People are people. I could be talking to you right now and I could be talking to who are, let's, the, let's say, let's give Kerwin a shout out. I could tell you and Kerwin the same story. Mm-hmm. And because of who you are, where you're from and your story, you, you will hear what you hear and take away from it what you take away from it. And so I've been challenging, I've been having a bit of a challenge asking myself recently because I don't know if my memory is getting bad or not, but it's, there a conversation I might have with somebody. Remember we talked about this? And I'll say, no, remind me. Giving myself permission to say, I don't remember. I, I'm, not, right. I'm not, I shouldn't be beholden to remember every interaction I have as an artist. You know what I mean? We meet people all the time. And, and for them, that moment that they remember was the thing they took away. But I took away something else from our interaction that they probably don't remember. And letting that be okay. That people mm. are people, and I try to be present, and I, I, I ask questions as I'm talking so that I could remain present. But I, I had to question myself a few weeks ago. I said, am I present enough in my interactions? Am I becoming yeah. Hollywood? A, a, am I having the, Am I talking to someone and looking for the next thing? So always reminding right. myself to be present and keep this human connection. That's what I, I, I that's the epiphany I've that's had. Good. And, and, yeah. and just to tell my younger self that it's, it's, it's okay if you don't. And people are going to be people and try to meet them, try to give them grace. Because they may be going through yeah. something that you have no idea what they're going through. Give them grace. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Unless they keep, they, the behavior keeps going, give them a little bit of grace. Like you said, like you said, people will keep, the people don't keep showing you who they are. You got to believe them, right? You gotta believe them. You gotta <laughs> but believe I love them. that. One last question before we wrap. This has been so juicy, y'all. And again, uh, you're gonna be like, "Oh, I've seen him in that. I've seen him in that. I've seen him in that." And I just, I'm, I think about your students and how lucky they are to have someone. Well, say it again. Them. Say it again for the cheap seats. I think about your students, how lucky they are to have you as a, as a professor. Also, because you know, and again, this isn't shade. Everybody serves their purpose in the education uh, field. But to have someone who's in it, actively in it, actively working, actively creating, and then still being able to pour into your students and teach them not just from text, a textbook and theory, but to to bring the the real current things to to light, I think that is that is huge. Um, hey, can I tell you one story? We got time. Yes. <laughs> yes. I do. So this is when my mother was transitioning. I would go home to see her. And, uh, you know, I was flying home one time, American Airlines, and Nigel Lithgow is about to get on the plane. Nigel Lithgow from So You Think You Can Dance, right? So I saw Nigel Lithgow in first class, and I was like, I'm not in first class. I got to get to my seat. So they said, well, Mr. Bolden, your seat's not ready. You have to go back to the front. Oh, I get to pass Nigel Lithgow again. Huh. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Lithgow, I don't know what you're doing in Atlanta, but my name is Keith Arthur Bolton. Here's my car. I'm a professor at Spelman College. We have an amazing dance department. Would love for you to come speak to our students if you have time. 
He says, well, I don't know what my schedule is, but I'll, you know, give you a call. Maybe this dude calls me the next day. And him and his partner that started American Idol say, hey, me and my friend Chris are here. You know, come pick us up from our hotel. We'll come speak to your students tomorrow. I'm a black dude in Atlanta, human trafficking capital, right? He calls me to, to ask me to come pick him up and bring him, a, bring him to Spelman for a chat. Okay. Right? And so I'm having this chat with Nigel Lithgow. And he came back again during the pandemic on virtual from, from, his, from the island that he lives on. That's what I bring. I bring courageousness. And I, and, yeah. and I, saw, I saw a human connection. He would have been in his hotel board in Atlanta. Now he got to interact right. with these amazing black students who, you know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I had to toot my own horn. I was very proud of myself for that. Um, that's but that's good. what I bring to my students. I bring a courageousness that's good. and I bring these industry professionals. Cause you know? it's, it's that, it's that thing of what if, what if you didn't say anything? What if I didn't say anything? You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And, and I dropped him back off at his hotel and he was, he was, he was great. He was amazing. Amazing. So, so, you know, I, I thank you for saying that. I, I, I appreciate that. I think, uh, I wish I had a me too when I was younger, you know, as I said before, yeah. and, uh, I think it's, I think it's really important, I, but I think it's, I think, you know, so the, as art goes, so goes the world. And as we mm-hmm. continue to decrease funding for the arts and exposure to the arts, um, you know, you don't have driver's ed in school anymore. You don't have cooking in school anymore. You don't have home ec anymore. So you're teaching, you're not teaching students to be well-rounded, uh, contributors to the culture of right. what it takes to actually run the world. So people don't appreciate the arts anymore. And as I said, as arts go, so goes the world. And we can see where the world is going because there's not enough art that people thinking and, and able to talk and see the humanity in the person and have, and have discourse and still get along. And that's what we do in our art, right. in our field. We may have discourse, but we collaborate to get the job done. And that's what we, people don't have the experience yeah. that we have, Christine. The blessing that we have to be in this thing called theater. It's so it's 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 amazing how we have to pivot and make things happen with nothing. And mm-hmm. that, if, 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 if people start investing in it again, I, in 10 years, they'll see an amazing change in this world. Amazing. Yeah. It's powerful. And whenever people try to tell me about artists, I'd be like, okay, just turn off your TV. Don't listen to no music. Right. What you oh, art's not important. Oh, just turn turn uh-huh. it all off then. Right. Since since it's not important. Right. You know, like because right. uh you, there will be no no Netflix and chilling. <laughs> right. All, all that stuff you had to do during the in the pandemic was because of artists. Yes. Don't forget it. Okay, final question before we wrap. You know, I want for for a moment, think about um, the seasoned actor at home listening, maybe he's been in this for, you know, for 15 plus years feeling, but just feeling frustrated. Like maybe I should throw in the towel. Maybe I haven't been working or maybe things are just, who am I kidding? Maybe my time is up here. Also Mm -hmm. think about the newer actor, my brand Nubian, who's eager, hungry, but hasn't had a breakthrough. Nothing Mm -hmm. just happening yet. If you could give them a virtual hug, a whisper of encouragement, what would you say to these to these artists listening to you right now? I would say that you are not alone. As uh, successful as I am, uh, I, I had these same questions about myself two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm not getting serious regulars auditions. I'm not getting major lead auditions. I'm not booking these things. I'm not, I'm, have I? Do I have an inflated? opinion of my own ability and I think it's because each time you set a goal for yourself the goalposts move after that Mm -hmm. so if you're if you're if your superficial goal is to have your name on the back of a chair on the set you get that and you realize oh that's okay that's what that feels like I still don't feel oh god what is it right so the focus has to be on it can't be on those superficial things. It has to be in the work. You know, how am I getting better? How am I transforming myself? But more than that, 
if you find that you're in an impasse, just be okay with the evolution of what artist you're becoming. Your evolution may be that you're moving from performing to writing or creating or, or, or performing to being a producer or performing to being a groundskeeper, or performing to being a caterer. You know, all of these things exist in the industry and just be open to the possibility. You know, shift your circle. Shift your circles around people. Misery loves company. Mm, so <laughs> if you have people, if you have a lot of people around you who are just saying, oh, I'm not working either. Oh, man, what are we going to do? Well, that's not energy moving forward. That's energy being stagnant and actually holding you back. So find the people that say, yes, you can. Find the people that would expand your, the scope of your possibilities because anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. You yeah. just got to work at it. You got to sacrifice for it. You might not be able to sleep for it. Mm -hmm. You might. That, I think that's my success story. Uh, is that when a lot of people are trying to catch up on sleep, I'm like, nah, I'm good. I will, <laughs> I, I will tape an audition at three o'clock in the morning. If that's what it's called for. To get it in. Yeah. To get it in, Right. Uh, I, I'm in Charlotte right now directing a show. But guess what? I had three auditions yesterday and I had to find somewhere to tape it. So I mm -hmm. called a buddy. He had a ring light. I had a camera. We went to his house and we taped it, put it on wax, sent it in. Yeah. Right? Um, so, I, but that's because I've aligned myself with people who say, I got you in the possibility of what you're trying to do. And so I think that, um, I, I think that people limit this, themselves uh, with um, the fear of being challenged when they're uncomfortable. So I tell my students, I tell people, you got to lean into the discomfort. Yeah. If you're uncomfortable or scared, lean into that. And guess what? It's like a rubber band. Once that expansion gets comfortable, you got to stretch again. Right. You have to always keep pushing the boundaries if you want to be an artist. Denzel just did Macbeth. Yes, he did. Right. Huh. But you, he's still not satisfied in his 70s or 69, wherever old he is. He still wants to do more. Oh, God, I, should, I did that shit. Now I got to do something else. Right. But what else am I going to do now? That's called ambition. Yeah. Right? That's called, I have something to say. I said this one thing. Now I have something else to say. Right. Yeah. It, that's so good. And, and because art is ever evolving and we are ever evolving. Ever. Mm -hmm. And we are who we are for me. And I'll speak for myself. I'm, I'm not worried. There's no competition for me. I'm trying to better my best. You're your own competition. Right. You know, so if you're sitting at home and I get, again, you're talking to, <laughs> you're talking to the book and magnet who books a lot. But I tell my students all the time, I book a lot, but I don't book a lot. Right. Right. So when I'm not booking, I'm working. I'm still getting better. I'm still writing. I'm still creating. So I would say, if you feel, and, and you said it also, it, it changes. If that means you take a break, if that means you do some other kind of work, okay. It's okay. There's <laughs> no, you're all, you're still, you still get to be an artist. If you get to be a cashier at Dollar General for a year, guess what? You have that is a front row seat to observing so many different body types and characters that you can take and hone and create characters to write or develop for yourself. So everything you can excavate, you can excavate for your art because there's no limit to your artistry or your expression. So get in there, do the work, look at people, look at humanity and bring it back to the work. Instead Come on. Of saying, Sorry for yourself. I was working at Dollar General. No, but how does, how does a person who is, you know, a recovering addict, come into a store trying to live their life right, but they fiending. How does that person interact with you? Do they make eye contact with you? Mm -hmm. do they, do they walk around the store just to keep themselves out of trouble? Like, what are they doing? And then you, and, and you don't ask them, you don't have to ask, just observe them. Then yeah. you come up with the story for why. Woo! Now you're creating Ooh. character. Oh, that's so juicy. That's one of my, that's one of my secrets. I've Ooh, watched that's, people. I've I watched love people. it. I love to do that. And I'm the queen of making yes. up a story. You know, I'll just, you know, you, you may just say, oh, I'm a people watcher. Yeah, but you, for a reason, there's the story, you're reason. putting stories in all of it. I love that. Yeah. That's such a good but reason. But you know what though? It's not, it's not, it's not, a, and it's not, I'm sorry to cut you off. It's not, a, and it's not about mimicking the person, but it's about honoring their humanity. Mm -hmm. Exploring them enough to ask the why. 
Even yeah. if you don't ask them, you're asking yourself why. And so you're not imitating them. You're actually giving, you, you're giving power to them in their situation by yeah. asking the why. And yeah. that's how you care about humanity. And that's, what, that's, that's why we're suffering because nobody's asking the why. You're just asking them, well, we got to get past this. So I don't care about the why. No, the why is the important question. And then the how. Yeah. Oh, that's so good, y'all. If you didn't take no, no rewind, hit the select our rewind. <laughs> rewind if you need to rewind. Oh, Key, this was so good. This was so, so good. That, Thank that, you. You, you, we, what we, <laughs> I have so many thoughts going through my brain. I guess we right got to work together now. We got to work yes. together. We haven't done that yet. Yes, I know. You know, but we, your fire is what is is making me lean into you because I mm. have that same passion for mm. my for my craft and no one gets to take that away from me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a no on that project, but it's not a no to Christine and it's not a no mm-hmm. to my gift. God gave me this gift and it's right. getting used and will always get used. Maybe not on your project, okay. But then I, my default is not and will not be. I guess I just don't have it. No, that's a lie. And look, like you said, and we're gonna before I know we're not gonna get on no more soapboxes, but get on it. If things, but things are not working. You got to look at yourself. What's going on with within you, around you? Like you said about your circle. You mm-hmm. know, I, t- I like as simple as. I tell people, if you're not free where you tape, you need to tape somewhere else. Mm. If you're reading with somebody who you're playing small to for them for some reason, or they make mm. you nervous or uncomfortable, I don't care if it's the coach or your husband or your wife, you need to read with somebody else because mm-hmm. you got to be free. Mm-hmm. So, free so many to, nuggets. Free, free to make those choices and free to have agency to make those choices. Yeah. I, 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 you're definitely right. It's, it's, I love what we do. Yeah. I love what we do. And I think it's, it's take it for granted because we make it look so easy. Uh, but because yeah. it, 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 I've been in some acting classes recently and I'm just like, wow, it's a lot of posturing going on. People coming up, standing and just posturing because I look good. I'm going to do this. But there's no nuance. There's no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no undercurrent to, to, to what you're trying to get to. There has to, you have to want something. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're just looking good and posturing. Yeah. And and and, and unfortunately, celebrity is 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 paramount over everything, and and the the work is not respected. That's why people can wake up in the morning. Anybody can wake up in the morning and call themselves an actor, but I cannot wake up and call myself a lawyer. Nope. Or a doctor. Or a doctor, or none of that. And I'm not saying that people aren't, aren't inherently tr- talented, but there is a skill to the craft that the work would be so much better if it were honored in a way, right? I think there's a lane for, for things for reality TV, but when we get to this work, stop hiring people who, I, I did something recently. <laughs> and I went to the showrunner afterwards and thank, the, the person said, thank you, man, thank you. And I said, listen, just do me a favor. Go with the talent next time. Go with the talent. Don't chase, because they had to let somebody go. And, and I, I came in and uh, it was great. But I auditioned for it initially. Mm-hmm. And the talent didn't work out. The celebrity didn't work out. So, like, get with the talent. There's talent. So there's so much abundance of talent. The people who may look quirky or not look like the type you want, but they're gonna bring you so much, and your the work's gonna be so deeper. Yeah. And we're gonna look at it 20 years from now, like Forrest Gump. Like, wow, look at this. Right. Yeah, you're gonna make me watch Forrest Gump this weekend just for You gotta second. watch it. You gotta watch it again. You can know, watch the movies that made us. Oh, that I I yes, I am. Oh, that. If y'all haven't watched the movies that made us, especially the first Dirty Dancing, Ghostbusters, and then yeah. go watch Forrest Gump in the third season. I'm telling you, it's, it's like, yeah. wow, this is how, they talk about how Tom Hanks found the accent. Oh, I, oh, I, I'm good. Oh, that's gonna. That's, I, won't, that's, I won't even tell. I won't even tell you. I won't even tell you. That's juicy weekend. The, the, oh yeah, I'm gonna be stuck on that couch. I already know because that's what I do. That's my own. You know, especially when I'm booked a lot. And so my acting class, my master classes, I watch things I watched as a child with new uh, eyes. Different perspective. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's what I do. I mean, I'll just pick an artist or I'll just pick a, a genre, and I'm like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, or look how the style of acting has changed or look how the style of movie making has so that's how I learn and just have my own and I try them on for myself yeah, yeah. 
I'll try things on, you know, sometimes I'll just say like the last person, yeah, you know, Paul Giamatti, like I would just mm. study him. Like I'll just study him and then try on his things. So it's just part of my process. Him, him in Planet of the Apes, I mean, bad movie, but him in Planet of the Apes is just amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, no, no, that's that's good that you do. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my work. So people, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to. I no, I don't have any money. I can't study. Lies. Just go to the internet. Lies. You can. Lies. Yeah. Anyway, as y'all can see, Keith and I could talk forever today. It's why we're friends. Um, I I am gonna manifest. I'm putting in my manifestation seed planted for us to share this spring together. Um, but in the meantime, yes. keep doing what you're doing. Keep shining your big beautiful light. Um, each and every one of you remember all of us have something that is magnetic and magical about us. And the same way you've heard Keith's story on tapping into that, what that was for him, sitting in the knowing, being okay with sitting in your knowing of what is true for you. It doesn't matter what, how you, the other people feel about that. That's not your responsibility to carry, but you mm. can sit in what you know about yourself. Mm. So again, if you can follow, you will be able to follow Keith at all his socials and learn more about what he does. I'll put all that in the show notes. Keith, thank you. Thank a you. A pleasure, a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you all for watching. Make sure you tune into the next episode of Booking Magnet Magic. Till next time, bye. Sure. <laughs>